Okay, uh, very good morning, one and all. Uh, myself, Suresh Kumar. I'm presently working as a, a faculty in the Department of Psychology, American College, Madurai. Um, I would like to record my sincere thanks to the principal of uh, PhD College of Education, Dr. R. Vendan, for giving the great opportunity for me to share my experience during this COVID-19 period. So uh, I'm going to share my screen regarding uh, my presentation. I hope you can be able to see my uh, screen. So the topic which was uh, uh, sent to me was impact of COVID-19 on mental health of teachers. I think we all, uh, uh, most of you, uh, those who are participating here are teacher educators and uh, maybe related to that, associated to that uh, PSC College of Education. Um, uh, before uh, begin my session, I would like to ask you uh, some of the questions. Okay, I think many of you as a teachers, you can uh, comment your uh, uh, common problems before COVID-19 and after COVID-19. Just you can type, you can send your uh, comments in the chat box. Please type, what are the problems you had before COVID-19 when you are working in a college or education institutions? And after COVID, what are the problems you are facing now? Just type it in the chat box. Yes. I think somebody told me the voice is not audible. Is it so, Mr. Elil? Okay, I think um, there are a few responses, I think, except uh, two. I think they were not given the proper response. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm asking you, what are the problem you had before COVID-19? The COVID-19 virus, as a teacher, you can type in your question. You can type in your question. Likewise, what are the problem you had in your... Uh, uh, working place. Just type it in the chat box. I hope everyone is having the very good time management is the problem. Yes, Shobha also given the time management is a, was a big problem even before COVID-19 and after COVID-19 also. There are many of them, they are not able to cope up with the time management. Yes, any other? If you want to share your points, you can unmute yourself and then you can say that also. Say also. Yes, before COVID-19 and the, the, after COVID-19. You can record both. Only two responses. <laughs> I think many of you are not comfortable with using technology, I think so. Anyhow, it's okay. Um, uh, I will proceed. So I would like to start from what is COVID-19 when this uh, pandemic was announced. Uh, in January 2020, there is a market called Wuhan in China. That, is done, um, uh, that market, uh, the virus was identified and the spread was very huge. And WHO announced that the out outbreak of coronavirus is un uh, uncontrollable. There is a high risk is there in that virus also they found. And in the month of March, they announced to the world that it is not an epidemic, it is a pandemic. Epidemic is a particular period it will spread and then it will stop. It will not go to the, around the world. But pandemic means throughout the world the problem will be persisting. So that is, that is why you call it a pandemic. And uh, now uh, the topic, uh, what I'm interested here, what I'm going to share here is uh, uh, teachers uh, before and after, what are the uh, problem they had in the mental health component only I'm going to speak about. And here you can see that uh, uh, 
the teachers before COVID-19, they were in the classroom, they are face to face in interacting with the students. Okay, and then you can see in the first picture, you can see the teacher will be there, the student will be there, you can interact with them face to face. But after COVID, it is not possible because the government is announced that physical distancing or social distancing we have to follow to curtail the spread of coronavirus. Okay, due to that, because of that, we are not. Uh, uh, um, uh, there are many institutions, even that uh, wherever the more crowd is possible to assemble, there the government announced that that should be prohibited. That way, there is no education institutions are open, and they are expecting more days to open the institutions. And there are a lot of processes are there. And uh, recently, one uh, study uh, pointed out that in France, in France. Uh, recently, there is an one education institution was opened and, and they given the, all precautions. They made a preventive message, mask and all the sanitizers that they had uh, during the first day. After the first day of the session, they found that around 90 percentage, around 90 percentage had a problem. Okay. Around 90 percentage uh, um, students and there is some symptoms of COVID-19. In that, in that school, around 160 uh, students were uh, attended on that day. 90 percent just count, counted around 140 plus. 140 students were um, uh, found that they are po po positive, COVID-19 positive. So that is why many of the uh, government is uh, uh, fear about reopening the education institutions. Okay. Now we'll go to that. These are the comparison of traditional classroom and modern classroom. Traditional classroom, you know that. Uh, these things were happening before COVID, but after COVID, you can see that most of the education institutions are forcing the teachers, they have to engage with the student through uh, online mode. Through online mode, they are asking the uh, teachers to engage the students in online mode. Uh, one of the more now we are attending here is called Zoom. Zoom application, we are attending my session. Likewise, there are many institutions, regularly they are uh, giving the uh, classes. And there are, uh, um, and the recent uh, my presentation, there is one, one of the participants who asked me uh, how we can uh, provide a, a technological facility to all the people in India. It is not possible because in a, in a house, there are two students, are there one father is there, but the father is a teacher. The school students, they have to use the technology for uh, teaching and learning. But it is practically not possible with only one uh, computer or mobile phone. So these practical problems are there in uh, today's. Um, and there are some applications we are uh, uh, very uh, earlier it was on paid versions for example google meet after this uh, lockdown was announced after this pandemic was announced the google meet uh, to come forwarded and then they given the free version of google meet you need not to pay any money for using google meet but earlier you have to pay uh, suppose 1200 for uh, using the all the features of google meet google meet is an online platform introduced by the google to engage the students. There is one more option is called Google Classroom. Google Classroom, you cannot have the video uh, interaction. There, what you can do, you can uh, assign the students to submit their assignments or you can share your, uh, for example, lesson plan. You may, I think most of the teachers, you will prepare lesson plan or session plan. You will share the lesson plan to the students. Okay. The next one is uh, um, some of the roles uh, were played by the teachers before COVID-19. I'm going to share with you all. Um, what they were done, uh, I have given only few of the uh, role played by the teachers before COVID-19. One is teaching face to face. Okay, they have to go to the classroom and then they have to teach the students uh, on the particular subject on the particular day. And they, what they have to do, they have to prepare a lesson plan also. Lesson plan, session plan, it is important. I think you all know that uh, those are in the education institution. They have to submit a lesson plan to the management, even the principal, they have to submit. Um, why lesson plan is important? If they are prepared very well lesson plan, they can able to uh, engage efficiently the classrooms. That is the only reason. Because when they plan for 45 minutes, they will give importance to for student engagement as well as the teacher engagement. How many, how many time the teacher can speak and then how much time they can give it to the students for interactions. So these were the role played in before COVID-19. And another one is uh, before COVID-19, every institution and the teacher's role is and they have to report to the management what they have done at least once in a week. Once in a week, they have to report. And if the head of the department or uh, uh, if it is an only teacher, they have to report to the head of the particular uh, division. And the documentation of academic components, yes, all the, uh, how many attendance they have to maintain 
and uh, uh, question papers, answer sheets, and then uh, records submitted by the assignment uh, uh, daily diary they have to maintain. So these were the uh, work they have to do before COVID-19. One of the important components at the end, examination. I've given the only core components of a teacher's role. Here is an, uh, uh, right now we are in the crisis. There are many institutions we were asked to, to engage the students. We were asked to engage the students. So uh, due to that, uh, there are many institutions that are engaging uh, their students and teachers through online mode, like Zoom Classroom, Google Meet, and then WebEx Meeting. There are many uh, provisions are there. Now our session is on uh, going in that uh, live in YouTube also. There, those who are not able to attend here, I can see there are around 20 members are uh, watching that video. Even here inside is on 28. Okay, so this is the way we can engage ourselves for learning. And the teacher's role is here. There are uh, those are having the basic skill about technology they can able to survive. Just think about the teacher who is not having well versed in computer or a mobile phone. It is very difficult for them to engage. And uh, during this COVID-19, post-COVID-19, they are supposed to learn the uh, technological skills. They are supposed to learn the technological skills even if they are not interested or uh, even if they are not having that phone. Next one is the reporting to the management because they have to get a salary from the management. So what they have to do, they have to report to the management through email and phones. Every day they have to send a WhatsApp message. What I have done? How many students were uh, present today? What subject I was taught to the student? So these reports they have to do. If we are working in a private schools or colleges. Yes. And another one is that the online admissions are going on right now. Earlier, there is an, um, uh, what they will do, they will uh, go to the, uh, every home, they will go and approach them. If they are a student, uh, potential students are there, in that home, they will canvas them and then they ask them to, can you join this course? But right now, it is not possible. So instead of that, what they are doing, uh, doing they are collecting the mobile phone numbers or uh, email numbers, and then they are uh, doing the online uh, admission process that are going on, where many institutions have started now. And recording the session, suppose if they are taking the classes, they have to record the session and then they have to, uh, pass it to the management. Next one is uh, um, managing the technology uh, by using that online test. Now you can see uh, Tamil Nadu Teacher Education University and uh, Tamil Nadu Open University and most of the universities in Tamil Nadu, what they are doing, they are uh, having the quiz program, online test. It is unlike online test, my MCQ. Immediately after submitting your answers, you will get a certificate. If you score more than 80 percentage, they will give you the certificate. If it is less than that, they will inform you how to take again. And if you increase your score, then you will get a certificate. So these are the a new role of the teacher after COVID-19. And it forces the teachers, they have to uh, nurture their technological skills. Okay. And the next one is, uh, uh, here we can discuss about the common problems of the teachers before and after COVID-19. So yes, we are, we, we, with the teachers, uh, before COVID-19, we had a over workload. Yes, we have to be there in the school or education institution at least eight hours. If it is an eight hours, you don't be there on eight hours. You have to be prepared for that. If you are from on, uh, 20 kilometers or 40 kilometers away from the education institution, you have to travel for at least 30 to 40 minutes. And traveling times and planning time and then engaging the students in the classroom, everything will be included. So over workload, many of the teachers were encountered before COVID-19. And stress, yes, and uh, think about the teachers. If the hundred students are in the classroom. It is very difficult for them to manage all the students. And some students with the behavior problem will be there. Some students will be non-cooperative in nature. As a teacher, we have to tackle all the students. And another one is uh, very commonly we can find out a student problem. Students' problems are very common. And uh, for example, uh, groupism will be there. Community politics will be there. One teacher uh, having the favorable to one particular student, I mean, they will against his teacher, they will give the, all the trouble to the management. So these were the problem. And then there is an ego problem among the teachers. Polit they will simply say that the politics in the education institutions. So, uh, and another one is management is managed. Some of the management will be very cordial to the uh, teachers, but some management they won't be. What they will do? They expect the teachers would work for a 24 and 7. 24 and 7, they will have to work. So these were the pro um, common problems of the teachers before uh, COVID-19. But post-COVID-19, and many of the teachers in working in private institutions, um, 
And these problems are not pertaining to that those are working government and government aided issues. What is the problem they are facing? Job insecurity is very common among the private uh, school teachers. Many of them, they don't know whether my job will be continued or not. Whether I will be uh, there in this job, or whether I can get the salary or not. There is an anxiety and fear of whether I can get a COVID or not. If it COVID comes to me, how I can survive? So there are anxiety and fear due to that job security and another one is about the virus. So both the side they are having the problem. But on one side we can be able to tackle. Think about it as a trouble from around you in the family after expecting you have to meet the essential food for the family members. Essential rice you have to procure. Father, you need a money. And how many days we can able to have the savings? Savings may be uh, sustainable for most of the family in uh, poor, uh, poor and then middle class family they can sustain for three months. Think about if the lockdown continues more than three months, if they are not getting the salary, yes, it will be a very big hectic for them. It will create a stress among the teachers and hopelessness and helplessness. Even the uh, earlier if it is and everyone is working, you can able to get help from them. But now there is no even the same uh, what, what the problem we are facing the same problem faced by other teachers also. They are hopeless and then helpless. Even government is not supporting. Many of the teachers are saying that. And even the government uh, institutions, teachers are getting uh, far, far more salary than the private institutions. Even the government know everything, but they are not uh, looking uh, into that. And lack of skills and interest in uh, online component. I think we cannot assume that all the teachers in online mode will, uh, 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 all the teachers will have the uh, skill of uh, using the online technology. It is very difficult. You cannot say that everyone has the skill. I can say that uh, when computer was introduced in the banking sector, most of them, they does you know how to type it. What they will do, they use only one finger. Okay, you can see like this, they will type. For your name, it takes around five minutes to enter your name alone. Now it, they are well versed. Now we are in a situation, we have to use the technology, but I can assure you, uh, once uh, this period is continued, all the teachers understand the necessity of learning the technological skills to survive in the field, to survive in the field. And I will tell you, if one institution conducting webinar or online classes, the other institutions are forced to take the classes. They are forced. And they will say that, why the, that institutions are engaging the students, why not you? Why not you? They will ask you, the management will ask, will ask you. And the management will uh, think about their, uh, uh, their benefit only. But most of the, I can say that humanitarian uh, institutions also, there are many private institutions, they come forward, they give the money, I can say. One of my friend told me that he is working in one of the private college and then he told me, I'm really happy with that when I was working in my uh, regular days, they given the more workload. But during this lockdown period, they know that how we are struggling and they given the salary on time. Uh, before, they won't give the on time salary. It may be 15 days or 10 days later we'll get, but now they are getting on time. I think I have to thank my management. Such a management also there. But there are some management they are not able to, they are not having the humanitarian approach also, even the COVID-19 crisis. I think there are many of them are still coming. Okay, I will uh, going to continue. Uh, here, uh, so what I have given there as of now, um, the common problems of the teachers. Okay, before COVID-19 and after COVID-19 we discussed. And now I'm going to tell you that the impact of COVID-19 on mental health. So this is the presentation I got it from that uh, Nimads. There, they given that uh, uh, these things. So, uh, what is the predominant problem, mental health problem among the teachers or any human being during this COVID-19 is that worry about self and then family. Suppose I got a virus, what will happen to me? Whether I will survive or not? If I had a COVID-19, will I be uh, responsible for spreading that virus to my family members? So, these persons will be there ruminating in the thought that will make them to sad and then worry. The next one is distress and then overload, overwhelming. Distress. They are stressed because of this COVID-19. And they have to answer the phone to the management also. Overload means, I think, uh, uh, see, I will tell you. Before face-to-face -face classroom, if you have the content for only one hour, you have to take a class. But you have the content for 30 minutes. Another 30 minutes, we can ask them, how are you, what you had. You can speak those things. So no one will watch. But now, think about in online, everything will be recorded. Not, not only by you, you and your students can record and then show it to your management. 
See, the, the, this teacher is not taking the class properly. This, this kind of workload will be very common. And indecisiveness. We don't know the, uh, uh, when this uh, lockdown will be over. We don't know how, how to make a decision, whether we can continue uh, these classes or not. And there, there is no clarity in thinking. We are going to see that physical symptoms, uh, cognitive symptoms, emotional symptoms in the coming slide also. And difficulty in processing the information, we are getting a lot of information about the COVID-19, whether all the information we are getting and we are processing, we have to think about all the information is correct or not. We have to, we have to, we are not having that because we are getting more information. Even those who are very close to us and then we believe them, they, they will send the uh, good information. They may also forward fake information. So we have to be very careful and all the information you have to consult with them. Even once or twice, you have to think about whether it is correct or not. And very commonly, everything that leads to depression and anxiety disorder among the people during this COVID-19. So these are the uh, common impact of COVID-19 on mental health. And here we can see some of other impact of COVID-19. One is emotional imbalance. The emotional components, you can see that fear, anxiety, and denial and depression among the individuals. Here will be the definitely. And physical components, somatic complaints, like uh, hypochondria. They may not have the virus attack, but they may feel that they are having the virus. And insomnia, sleeping problem will be uh, uh, common among the individual. And loss of appetite, they may not use, uh, uh, they, they may eat more or they may eat less. They may eat more or they may eat less. So this is a very common thing you can find out. Because they are in the home, they will take uh, excessive food in the home. And another one is financial issues. Yes. As we discussed earlier, loss of jobs will be very common, less pay, the insecurity in the workplace, negative attitude, very common, the refusal to seek help, even if they are having the symptoms of corona, they will not, okay, if I go there, they may be quarantined for 15 days, how I can interact with other others, I cannot speak to anybody else, so they may not uh, uh, reveal their uh, things. No adherence, they will not follow the rules and regulations guidelines given by the healthcare agencies and government. They will ask you to wear a mask, but nobody is not wearing the mask and uh, they are uh, spread, uh, spreading the virus to other people also. Even the carelessness leads to uh, problems to other people also. And social rejection, there is some discrimination. If you come to know that you had a positive uh, COVID 19 positive, those who are surrounding neighbors, they will discriminate you. They will call you as in COVID-19. You, you are not supposed to call the person who is undiseased or victim of COVID-19. The person who affected virus, even it may be affected, no one is, uh, uh, I think, there is a saying that the, the pandemic is no one is aware about clarity about the virus. When this will be end, when they are going to find out the vaccines, whether the vaccines will be um, uh, successful for this, no one knows. So this is the first time we are experiencing the human uh, extinction the human uh, existence in the world. And uh, the rejection and social withdrawals are very common during this pandemic period. Social withdrawals are very common. Okay, so these were the other impacts of COVID-19 and here we can see that what may be the cause or reason for the distress. One is the inadequate uh, skills. Communication, we don't know how to communicate properly uh, to the management. If you found that there is an, uh, uh, some person in your area are uh, prone or uh, uh, prone to the COVID-19, we can you know, communicate to them properly how we can be safe and secure, how it will not be spread. I can say that one news today, a man who bought an apartment in Chennai, he was, uh, when the lockdown was announced, he was in there in Hyderabad, when the lockdown was relaxed, he come to his apartment, he spent around one crore. The apartment association not allowing his family to enter in the apartment. Think about it. So the communication is very poor and they have to say that how it will be spread, how we can secure. But inside the people, even the, there are many news may hear about that. Those are working with, dealing with COVID-19, doctors were not allowed to come to their home, the apartment. And uh, uh, interpersonal skills are very poor. I think they don't know how to uh, interact with other people. Even uh, we can say that manners, interpersonal communications are very, very low. And problems only comes down. They may not uh, solve all the problems and there is no clarity in that uh, mind. Also. 
which leads them uh, they may not take the proper decisions and inadequate sources uh, as i said in the beginning if you have the basic needs you can able to survive you can able to cope if you are not having the basic needs very difficult and the family support we need i think there are many cases were recorded during this lockdown period there are many abuses were there many sexual abuses physical abuses this was recorded so we have to be tiny those things also and um, uh, we are not having the access to healthcare also i can say my son is not feeling well for past four days uh, due to bacterial infection when we were approached uh, some of the uh, medical centers nearby my village they denied no no we want to uh, uh, take a case with fever we need we are uh, particular only about uh, covid 19 patients you can go and approach somewhere else and then i went to madurai and madurai even they are having the restrictions we, earlier we can go with two persons now only one person one uh, supporter will be allowed inside the hospital it is very difficult and the charges for uh, spending healthcare system is i can say the triple amount it is not triple more than that and the inadequate coping uh, strategies and due to this uh, covid 19 uh, that uh, anger and outburst will be very common among the people and faulty coping strategies some people they are looking for addictions they may think that they can come out from the problem deep uh, the thing but they go for uh, alternative smoking will be their very common even they are paying more amount they are practicing it and tasmak was open before tasmak there are many illicit liquors were sold in my area i think women are aware about it still there are those who are addicted to that liquor they know that where they can get and there are there are studies uh, uh, news are saying that hand sanitizer and the alcohol base so they are uh, some of the people who uh, drink hand sanitizer and they had health issues also and being dependent during this period many people are dependent on others yes we have to be so these are the, some of the causes that uh, leads to distress now i am going to say that uh, some of the symptoms you can check with that whether uh, even if it is on teacher or student or people or a parent you can check with these symptoms i think as i have discussed earlier also this thing check these symptoms headache any pain in your body okay that is one of the symptom low energy for example earlier you may be involved in all the activities but now after this covid 19 you feel that very low you feel feeling tired all the time and check with that your sleeping pattern are you sleeping properly 8 hours or 9 hours in a day eating problem you excessive eating or less eating too much of energy because of that overeating will lead to too much of energy <coughs> we don't know how to exhaust that energy we had in our body and nervous habits such as nail biting uh, hair uh, twisting will be there this uh, common behavioral issues you can find out in the individuals you can check these things and changes in thinking pattern and they used to say the negative words themselves okay i okay, definitely i will get a virus no no whatever problem come that will come to me first so this is this is the word you can get it the ghost people and blaming others for the problem what they are encountering they are not able to control anything they will blame it is because of you it is an husband they will find out why it is an wife they will find out their husband if both responsible then they will find out to the parents if they are not there they will find out the children and trouble in concentrating they are not able to concentrate for an 10 minutes or 20 minutes and negative frequent negative thoughts as i said earlier frequent negative thoughts will be there definitely whether i will get this virus whether i will be survive or not the next one is change in the performance there are a lot of change will be there in the performance really they may perform very well but uh, after this uh, um, imbalance they may think improperly and uh, in the feeling said you can see that they feeling that uh, uh, for small thing they may feel big reaction they may feel it They, they most of the they feel unhappy worried guilty feeling will be um, uh, surfacing and the fearfulness is common among the people they are fearful because of the virus and the, the uncertainty of their so, social economic status irritability because others those are speaking this time earlier you were away when you are working 8 hours will be away from the home you may not have uh, chance to listen your partner but now you have to be along with your partner when now they say you get a irritability even the children's are in number of questions and sadness 
and anger will be there among the individual and the feeling of helplessness and hopelessness will be predominant among the individuals as i said in the beginning they feel lonely and rejected because think about it that uh, one incident i can say one case um, she was she is around 85 years so before lockdown their children were uh, their uh, son and uh, son uh, daughter in law were uh, went to work it is uh, 40 kilometers away from their home and the four minutes only they given the government on four hours come back so during the lockdown was announced they were not able to reach the home that lady alone in the home suffering a lot loneliness think about it they are uh, those are with the family members you have to think you are safe these are the feeling common among I mean, behavioral component you can see that uh, uh, most of them they even early they may be with the other members but now they want to be alone they will uh, crying is very common among the individual they show less interest they will not participate in any kind of games the family members are involved in over reacting to the simple incidences and sudden outburst of anger then tears will come out from them without any reasons and trouble in relaxing sleeping problem will be there uh, uh, spending lot of time for date in the okay after this lot of night will come down this they, they will spend most of the time and image behavior they will exhibit even appropriate age appropriate behavior they will to exhibit if they want to show the maturity but this time they will exhibit inappropriate behaviors and trouble in getting along with their friend they even they are not able to make a phone call to their friend and they cannot able to make a proper communication to their friends so this was a problem you can see it is, it is because of the covid 19 and your behavior your thought your feeling and physical component to check these things are uh, surfacing in your thing you can identify that you are having a mental health problem why a uh, mental health is very important if your mental health is good among the teachers they can have the improvised help they will participate the academic activities even the workload is more in the online mode they will open to learn and then they will engage the student appropriately effectively and you can see the productivity among the students and teacher the teacher will spend quality time for preparing the lesson plan and students will uh, submit their assignments and homework uh, on time and there is an stability in their cognition they will take proper problem solving thinking reasoning will be very clear and emotions they exhibit appropriate emotions to appropriate way that is why we call it emotion intelligence if, if you want to be emotion intelligent your mental health must be good then another one is behavior component and we can see that there are many behaviors are inappropriate behavior it is because of that there is a fluctuations in your mental health okay so these are the why we need a better mental health for active participation to actively engage the students and others the next one is uh, um, suppose if you have uh, failed to meet the mental health of an individual what are the problem we face one is uh, increase the distraction in learning in concentration there are a lot of distraction will be there in the learning poor involvement in academic activities we won't show involvement even um, before lockdown we were um, uh, for example one hour class we will prepare for two hours but now i think we most of them will develop the procrastinates we won't uh, engage ourselves in the academic activities and then risk taking behavior at more okay we'll see what will happen we'll take our we'll face the problem later so this kind of behavior will be surfacing among the individuals if your mental health is not good and these are the barriers for getting the mental health uh, treatment as of now one is lack of awareness about mental health there are many people even the adult matured people they don't know how to ex- express their mental health problem if they are not able to concentrate they think that okay it may be something i am not out of um, proper food no there are many reasons are there they can get Uh, you know what is better mental health and well being they have to aware about it then only they can able to say to somebody else they can able to seek a help from others and lack of resources definitely now there is no money in most of the family members human resources are very less as per the government uh, uh, statistic it's saying that mental health professionals are very very less in india in developed countries for 10 members there is one mental health professional but in india there are two professions that are registered by the government one is a psychiatrist and another is clinical psychologist and others were called as some consultant and counseling psychologists and many of them were uh, uh, they are studied but uh, theoretically they are very sound but practically i can say that not all the persons were good in that 
who, who we can say that they are good in that counseling practice. A person who is open to learn continuously, then only they can survive in the field. They know the advancement in the field. And there is no facilities and then resources available for seeking help for mental health. I can say that there is a government norm in Tamil Nadu government to go to the medical council and see every hospital, even that uh, uh, rural uh, health care centers, primary health care centers, PHCs, primary health care centers must have one mental health practice there. But I cannot see, I, as per my knowledge, there, is, there are many institutions, even in the town or the city, are not having the adequate mental health services. In Madurai, um, there are three vacancies for clinical psychologists. I'll give one example. But there are only one faculty is there, remaining two vacants still not unfilled. And, uh, and the other, that district mental health program and then other mental health practices they are appointing psychologists, still those, those fields are still vacant. So, uh, the vacants were not filled. So, uh, lack of facility, lack of uh, resources available for seeking the mental health services as of now. And stigma. There are many, many people as uh, we think that if you go and ask for help for our mental health problem, they may label as okay, he is a uh, loose, uh, in general, they will say that psycho. But think about it unless we are not getting proper uh, help at, at appropriate time, definitely you are going to suffer a lot than the person who is. Uh, bullying, name calling, avoid those things. They will not come for your help. We are the one we responsible for our health. And the other barriers are there, and then transport is, and then finding out the who is the right person, and who is a uh, specialist like that. As who is a specialist for uh, relationship counseling, so other barriers are there. And uh, here are uh, some of the strategies uh, we can take it as a to improve our better mental health. One is psychoeducation. What is psychoeducation? Very simple. Psychoeducation means to know, aware about what will be the cause for that and what are the problems we will encounter after that. For example, COVID-19. COVID-19 psychoeducation means you have to tell me what is COVID-19, how it will spread, how you can prevent, what will be the impact it will make if you get into that. So that is called psychoeducation. Psychoeducation means make them aware about the particular problem. That is called psychoeducation. For example, if it is an worry, tell me what is worry, why it is coming, how you can tackle. If worry continues, what will be the problem? That is called psychoeducation. Even it is for stress, anxiety, everything you can include. We have to make it. That is why in, uh, <coughs> uh, in uh, government school syllabus, you can see there is an one class called wellness classes. Wellness classes will be there. Now, now the government is introduced. I think uh, coming years, the teachers, we have to be all the teachers as a, we have to practice as a wellness teacher also. The next one is uh, um, in um, academic setting. See, in our home as well as in the classroom, if you want to be better mental health as a teacher, what you have to do? See, accept there is an individual difference. Individual difference will be there. Not all the students will be same. And you have to show the um, um, uh, care to the children. And there is a saying that uh, a question was asked to the students, which teacher you like the most? There are two options. A teacher very good in the sound, he is very good in that particular subject. Another teacher who is carrying the student. I will tell you, the teacher with more subject knowledge will not be remembered by the student, I will tell you. A teacher who is carrying, if the teacher who come in the classroom, you say that, had your food, are you okay? This single word has a more impact on the student than anything else. In the same way, if you ask these things, the students will reciprocate. Sir, are you okay? See, these things will make us okay. We need to be healthy because there are somebody is caring for us. And uh, uh, we have to be very consistent. Um, uh, be consistent in the means in the classroom, don't uh, uh, when you give the instructions or rules and regulations implementing the classroom, you have to be very consistent. When you break the rules and then students will be labeled, okay, he will say, he will assign the assignment and if you won't submit, he will not bother about it. And don't punish the students. Don't punish the students. Instead of that, what you can say? You can praise the good quality and then say that if you, how you can correct your problem. This is the way we have to engage. Okay, if you scold the student, and if, uh, I think many of you know that 
the student will be suffer a lot and the corporal punishment there is an i think you all know that the teachers are not supposed to do that corporal punishment they not only uh, striking them with the sticks are in the bare hand verbally so when you read that they have to be very cautious very cautious as a teacher and i will tell you in neuro linguistic program what they are doing what you utter outside what you say you will become that when you say you will become a moron you you will become a moron when you say you will be doing good you will become a very amazing person in future not only that person will become a good we are also going to become a good the studies are saying what you say that you will become not even me even buddha also said so be positive words in the classroom not only make them to happy it will make us also happy see we are like social animals as a teachers we are social animals Uh, I am okay. You are okay. That is a principle by uh, Eric Bohr. Transaction analysis is there. If I say you are good, he will say I am good. And if you blame me, and the person looking for me to the time uh, to find out my mistakes. Yes. And uh, uh, when when we have the uh, uh, habit formation, the studies are saying that. A particular habit will be formed 21 days if you practice that particular thing. And there are many organizations who come forward to, during this crisis time. How we can engage ourselves for better mental? I can say I can. There is, and we are going to get a serious problem in future. Most of the studies conducted by leading organizations, they said that the biggest problem after this crisis is mental health problem. The mental health problem is the biggest problem. As a teacher. i think you are you are studying education education means modification of behavior psychology study of behavior okay if you want to climb as a teacher educationist you must be climb as a psychologist you must be psychologist then only you can able to modify the behavior so in psychology will study the behavior in education you have to modify the behavior as a group members that is called group counseling you are a group counselor okay and uh, the behavioral changes we have to cultivate that positive lifestyle we have to uh, develop in, in an individual by ourselves as well as the classroom because the students will listen the teachers words rather than the parents my teacher told me i will do that yes they listen uh, more than uh, teachers and the parents so very uh, you have to be ideal role model for the students okay and uh, whenever we are communicating uh, when you say something in the class um, uh, as a teacher what we have to do two simple uh, and uh, clear statement to the students even to the management also that is why i said the biggest problem right now what they are having the communication skill and the interpersonal skills these two skills were that one of the 10 core uh, life skills suggested by who even uh, there are many people who may not know how to interact with other gender they doesn't know how to interact with other gender they use rude words inappropriate words okay uh, these skills they have to develop and another one is uh, we have to be uh, strong in emotionally as well as physically so uh, as i said we have to practice positive words in our day to day life and relaxation techniques are very very important relaxation techniques are very very important what are the relaxation techniques you can use one is on listening music you know, listen the music what next uh, stretching exercises you can do stretching exercises and walk in your home or in your children play with your kids okay uh, listen music and uh, there are uh, guided uh, relaxation techniques are there in your uh, if you are using smartphone in google play store or iphone i store you can go there and find out relaxation melodies or relaxation guided imagery there are many apps are there you have to follow the instruction mindfulness exercises are there that is a very good for improving our mental health during this time <coughs> and open in learning learning the uh, new courses there are uh, courses are at education there are many webinars are going around even today also i can see say that there are around 100 webinars are going in tamil nadu alone you can take part in any one of the webinar when you engage something you learn something new informations 
when you listen to somebody else. So that will make you, and uh, I, I think uh, there's one study saying that uh, when you learn something, your brain will be active. Your brain neurons will be very active. That will send the signals to another brain. And if you are active, then you are giving exercise to your brain. That's good for your mental health. And uh, use positive affirmation in your day-to-day uh, -day life. Positive affirmation. Yes, very good. You have done amazing. Yeah, you are very good in that. Beautiful. Use the positive words. You are looking so cute. What a lovely person you are. Use such a words in your day-to-day -day practices. When you utter these words, you can get back. Okay. So these, these were the, some of the strategies. There are many strategies are there. Uh, due to time constraints, I'm going to stop here. There are many techniques are there to improve our mental health. I'm going to tell you uh, a few strategies at the conclusion right now. What are the strategies you can take? One is relaxation techniques. There are uh, uh, many relaxation techniques. I mean, listen to music, take a walk, stretching exercise, yoga, meditation, aroma therapy. I think mean, we are believing in a God who can use some aroma in your house. Aroma has an impact on our better mental health. Take a nutritious diet. There is a directly or indirectly responsible for our mental health. The what again to say that uh, groundnut, omega 3, fish liver oil. Can take these things. This is a supplement, uh, food supplement that will improve our mental health. Okay. In addition to that, what are the other things you can do? I said learning, reading books, take part in online education, and interact with others. Interact with others. Spend the uh, find out the right friend and uh, uh, try to volunteer or help. For you, this is the time. There are many people who may be hurted you. Find out those things and then this time you think about I'm forgiving. Say openly, open our mouth and say, I forgive the, uh, this thing you have done to me. Say, even the person is not there. When you do these things, you are healing your inner self. It is not uh, better for them, it is better for you. So these were the practices you can do. And time management is very important. Time shooting is one of the, Elil told when, when I was asking what were the problem, time management. Yes, this time we have to develop the skill of time management for our better mental health. So I stop here and there are many more uh, strategies are there uh, for improving our mental health. Uh, there are some guidelines also that I will share these PPT to uh, the principal Dr. Vendan sir. You can get the PPT from him. Um, uh, if you want to have any questions, you can ask me right now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you to the management for giving a great opportunity to share my experience today. Thank you all. Now uh, you'll be animated again. If you want to ask any. What is the importance? I think if you're screaming to 